However, no responsibility is assumed for inaccuracies. No statement made on this broadcast should be sure. construed as a specific recommendation of a particular with... investment product. Views expressed are those of the speakers and do not necessarily represent those of CBS Radio. Views only as directed. Smiles, everyone. Smiles. And prepare yourself for... Show me the money! Ladies and gentlemen, the radio broadcast experience designed to keep your wallet in top condition. It's Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. Talking Money. Talking Money. More money, more money, more money. And now entering the studio, your guru for fiscal fitness, Jeff Tarbell. All right, all right, how you doing? Good morning. Watching the all important critical fencing on uh, fencing is one of those things I just don't get. I don't get. I, you know, it, I guess maybe they move so fast I can't see who's scoring or not. It's very. I think fast. in fencing you should actually have to die in order to win. You know, right? Or at least be, bleed a little bit. That's right. <laughs> hey, if you're, you know, you got me in the heart and you win, dude. Yes, that would be it. That that's true fencing. The guy who's last standing gets the gold. I mean, really, that's him. So anyway, fencing is yeah. That's all right. The table tennis. Now, the table tennis on TV looks like they're playing on a quarter. I was thinking like, the same thing. They're hitting, the, they're hitting that little thing like 100 miles an hour. They're bouncing it off like the, my forehead. This, <laughs> uh, this thing looks super small. Anywho, how are you doing? I am the uh, soon-to-be homeless, Jeff Tarbell. That's John Fodorero. It is a Saturday as we speak. The moving trucks are picking up the last little remnants of, of our house and moving it to an apartment. boy. Yeah. And, and I'm getting the look now. I, I It didn't even occur to me until I was over there the other day picking up a key, and I'm, I'm coming out, and I was wearing a shirt and tie and, you know, walking around. And I'm starting to get that look from people like, there's another one of those guys that lost his house. <laughs> He's such a smart ass that he, he couldn't keep it together. And, uh, and and I'm telling people, people look at me like, oh, that's too bad. He brought his family and his dogs with him. He's out. So I think I'm just going to play the whole thing up and just start asking for coins and change. Absolutely, just going to go sit out there with my with my cup in front of the swimming pool, and I'm just too poor to swim. Definitely beer yeah. money. Yeah, and I can't. Uh, I need like I'll wear one of those like fat guy things around your waist, you know, like the the blow up things, and I'll just sit there and say, "I'm afraid of the water. Please help me." So uh, if they look at my pasty white skin, they'll know that I haven't been in the sun in a while. So I'm gonna I'm playing it yeah, out. Absolutely. I, I might have, I might be able to collect enough for rent for the next month. So yeah, we are. Um, this is the challenge, right? Because, because t- you know, you're. Sp- I'm going to be gone for a few days next week, and Estro is supposed to close while I'm gone. And the key word there is supposed to. So I have to kind of be out in advance. But you know, the buyer of our house doesn't even have loan docs in yet because they didn't use our company. Clearly, I always <laughs> like it when everybody says we should use the big banks. They're much more. This this big bank who's doing their loan is way behind schedule. Anywho, the different story. Right. Um. So I I could be moving out of a house that I still own and doesn't close which would be a real bummer if you have to live in an apartment and you got a nice house set i guess it'll be easy to sell again if we have to resell it. it's it'll empty right be nothing yeah i'm not sure I, I now now that i leave now so in all seriousness if you have to if you want to put a house on the market for sale do you are you a person who envisions you're better off to just get everything out of it clean it as much as you can and leave it vacant or do you do you like that theory of maybe leaving it what we would call staged, you know, I mean, as opposed to, I mean, most people have to sell it when their stuff is all in there. And we did a fairly decent job, I think, early on of just kind of, you know, cleaning out a lot of the stuff in the garage and just, you know, stuff that didn't, didn't need to be there. But we were still in it. There's five of us and two dogs, so we were in it. But now that I look at the house when it, you know, everything's really, really gone, gone, A, the place looks huge. <laughs> I mean, yeah. any, you know, a, a 900 square foot house, apartment looks big when you got nothing on it. <laughs> But I, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not really. I'm not sure which is better. Whether you, you well, what are your thoughts? You, you, I, I think. Yeah, I was thinking staged, just to give an idea of what's there. And I, I, and I, I and I really, I can't tell. You have to come over, maybe come see our house now because it's because it's gone. Now you start realizing. So if you're if you're if you're buying a house that's vacant, you start. Do you go? Oh my God! I, I don't have enough stuff to fill this house. Or do you say, God, I'm glad I'm not looking at their crap. I. My crap would look yeah. better, you know, better in here too. I don't, I don't know what the right answer is. You know how that is. Everybody's got a different. Their brain works different to visualize all that. And most, and you, when you look at a lot of, and maybe it just has to do with the size of the house. And, and certainly, if there's, if there's a realtor or somebody who's who likes to comment on that, please do. You can text us at forty four eleven forty or give me a call at three three nine eleven forty. Generally, when you go look at 
houses that are much bigger and nicer than my house is, they generally try to stage them a little bit. And I don't know whether they feel like, you know, you can go rent some really nice stuff and put it in there, or it just kind of gives you that feel of a of being at home. A little more homey. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, our place now, when you when you get it vacant, it, it kind of feels a little bit empty. Little little in. <laughs> yeah. Little. So, um, but it, but also if you, it looks a heck of a lot bigger than it really is right. when there's when there's nothing there. We had a lot of stuff in the house. So, anywho, we were uh, the moving trucks are moving out the last little bits. So my wife has been on the job all week. Happy so, too, I'm sure. Yeah, she's thrilled to do that. So Ecstatic to be we've been, we've been moving for three and a half weeks. I mean, really, yeah. we've been just little bits every, and it's a, if you can do it that way, and you know, and you have you give them that pace, it is a lot easier. You know, just every night you just take a few, you know, a few boxes or a trailer load of stuff over, put it in a storage unit, and just kind of get it out. And and, and man, it is a phenomenal. Way. I just I, I I firmly believe this that every six to seven years, you should move or just move out and move back in. Sure. Absolutely. It's just the function of moving your crap out yeah. of the house. And you go, oh, that's where that was. Right. Or, or why on earth have I been holding on to this forever? I'd like to see a raise of hands, those listeners. Uh, who really likes to move? <laughs> All hands up now. Yeah, nobody likes to move. <laughs> but I do think it, you, you kind of purge out your stuff and you kind of get rid of a lot of junk. And we probably, my, my, my oldest daughter probably took, I mean, no kidding, 11 or 12 loads in her little Ford car over to the... Um, to the donation place there. Wow. And, you know, she keeps coming with receipts, yeah. so they probably think that we are stealing stuff or something. I don't know. Sure. I, I just did the same thing when we had to move out of our bedroom. Yeah, well, see? Just you, trailer full. I mean, where's all the stuff come from? I don't know. I, I guess I didn't think about dumping 6,000 gallons of spa fluid in my, <laughs> in my dome. <laughs> There's the but, thought. Yeah, if you want to move or John could help you move. Yeah, every six or seven years, just flood your house. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. That is a, a technique I haven't thought of. Hey, I have got... Um, Loads and loads of stuff to cover today, too. A lot of market news this week. Some local company news, which is good. And um, some fun, some fun stuff as well. We'll do all that during our coming up on, I think we got maybe three or four more shows during the two hour. We go back to uh, some football in the second hour. So we're going to have to talk a lot faster in the, in the one <laughs> hour. <laughs> yeah. We still do a two hour show in the one hour. You just got to listen a little quicker. So uh, <laughs> we get all the same information and we just don't, we don't do. Uh, I guess we don't do as many quiz questions. In the, Apparently not. To the two-hour show. We'll give them all away in the first hour. So, And I do have some... Uh, tonight is the concert for uh, Helwig. The, is it the Renegade concert tonight? I am out of those tickets, but if we gave them out all week, remember that's tonight. I think it starts about 8 o'clock at Helwig Outdoors. But I do have some of their Friday night concert tickets to give away. Uh, every Friday night they do a little concert uh, inside their one of their tasting rooms there. It's kind of fun. So we'll give some of those away today. They mix it up. Got some River Cats. I think River Cats baseball wraps up at the end of and they might they might go a week or two into september and they're doing well too so we got a lot yeah. of those tickets to give away so hang around if you will and we will uh, do some fun stuff i do have uh i did get an email this week i get this one quite a bit and i um i almost hesitant to even comment on credit scores because it's such a um mystery world if you will i'm not i'm not, I'm not sure if anybody really knows for sure how all the little components go into calculating your credit score but i found a little chart that may may help you so if you if during the week if you have some questions or things you want to email me you can do that jeff at jeff tarbell.com the one i got this week was what would the effect what's the effect going to be of a short sale on their credit score in terms of do you know what it'll do to the number now my understanding is and, and well, let me back up first off it depends on how you get into your short sale because in the past, you were, in the past meaning even like last just last year, you were kind of almost forced to stop sending your payment to the lender just to kind of get their attention, right? Because right. If, if you're sending your payments and they don't know any better and then you just call and say, hey, my name is John, I would like to short sell my house. They're like, dude, you're making your payments. Why would we do that? Um, but you've been struggling behind the scenes and you're, you know every payment's been, been a lot of trouble for you. So a lot of the advice had been, stop saying any of your mortgage payments and then you'll go on to their bad boy list. And then when you're on their bad boy list, then we can talk to them about doing a short sale or, or some kind of a modification. And when you do that, or when you did that, you then hurt your credit score because now the, the, the mortgage lender reports, John missed a 30 day, John's not a 60 day, John's not a 90 day. And so your credit score dropped because of that. So in the process of a quote unquote short sale, your credit score dropped because you were trying to twist the arm of the lender to deal with you. 
Now that's changed a little bit, actually changed a lot um, now that lenders have come to determine or become aware that, you know, short sale for us as the lender, I mean, us, we don't service, but as a lender is, is probably a better deal than not collecting payments for you for the next year and then you leaving the house and then someone breaking in and stealing the air conditioning unit and blah, 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 blah. You know, and they don't end up, they don't net any more money. So they're, they've come to the conclusion, we better probably just look at John's situation and Kevin's situation and Marge's situation and say, okay, do we, does this person really need a short sale? And if so, let's just get it on. Um, and so through that process, you may not have to go late. Right. So the credit world doesn't know you're having these discussions with your lender as long as you're paying your, make your payments current. And then boom. The lender says, fine, I'll accept your, so I get it. I make an offer on John's house. John accepts it, sends it to the bank. The bank accepts it. I close escrow. John's been making his payments the whole time. So boom, he's gone and I'm in. And so nothing in the credit world gets recorded other than, you know, a little line item that says, you know, John's mortgage was settled for less than a full balance. And his score hasn't taken a hit. So that's a long answer to the question is the short sale may not have any effect. Now, I did see, and I don't know if I have it with me or not today, I did see that um, the credit bureaus were going to greatly diminish, if not remove, any credit hit for the actual short sale itself. Um, so they were trying, to again, to not penalize you for that on your credit report. Now, keep in mind that what a credit bureau does and what the mortgage community does are two different things, right? So on a exactly, short yeah. on a short sale, you got to wait what three years? Three years. So, and that and that's the part that people don't get. It's like, well, wait a minute. I negotiated with my bank. I did all this, and I did it by the rules. And why why do I have to? The lending community treats treats it the same as a foreclosure, which doesn't on the surface doesn't seem, sound fair, but in fact, what have you done? You have not paid back the full balance of your mortgage to a lender. And other lenders take that as, as being, that's a loss. And whether they had to get the sheriff out there to drag your butt out of the house or you handed over the keys and, and, and politely and cleaned the place and left, either way, they didn't get all their money. Yeah. So the as it stands today, and I, and I still contend that when rates come up a little bit and business slows down and, there's, and the lenders are looking for things to do, that may change. They may look at a short sale like a bankruptcy, which is two years, but at the moment it's three. But here's a couple things that how they here that I found on this chart that affect your credit score. So at the moment, a short sale, if done without having to go late, probably doesn't have a big effect on your credit score. That's what I'm talking about. Not your ability to borrow again, but your credit score. Okay. So here's items you can get taken um, some interest in, if you will. So credit mistake. I maxed out my credit cards. That can pull you down anywhere between 10 to 45 points. And what's interesting is that this chart talks about someone who's got a 680 score and a 780 score. And the penalty is worse if your score is at 780. It's almost a 45-point drop if you max out your cards. And w one of the first things that I look for, people will c come and say, hey, I need to p pull my score up 10 or 15 points. I'm right on the, on the verge there on the border. But the first thing I look at, and I am not a credit expert by any imagination, but I just look at their credit cards. You know, your Visa card says you have a, a limit of $5,000, you know, and you're at 3500 bucks. Okay, you're at 35. That's not the end of the world. But if you were at 24.99, you know, just under that halfway mark, paid it down by a thousand bucks or so, you'd be a lot better off score-wise. And so we we can run some programs for you that'll say, hey, if you took uh, 500 dollars on this card and you know and took some monies around and paid these things down, your score would come up a lot. So maxed out card is 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 a big one. A 30-day late payment. I'm I'm assuming that they're talking about a mortgage there. Not a credit card, but they might be talking about both. Can pull you down as much as 110 points. Yeah, that has to be mortgage, I would think. Got to be, that's got to be a mortgage. It's still a big hit on a credit card, too, though. Is it? Okay. So that's anywhere from a low of 60 to a high of 110 points. So a 30-day late is a big deal. Now, remember, you paying a late fee is different than a 30-day late. So you, you may have a late fee and uh, after 15 days, but that's not late on a credit report. That What it means is you've got to take... You didn't make your payment before the next one was due. We'll talk about uh, some other debt settlement and foreclosure and bankruptcy and all those things, too, when we come back. We also got a quiz question. We'll do that right when we come back after the break. This is Talking Money. Our number here is 339-1140. If you're on hold, I promise I'll get right back to you. This is Talking Money. My name is Jeff Tarbell. That's John Fodororo. We'll be right back.